My dad's disabled. But I'm his main carer. My dad had a, a fall whilst I was away. There's another worker there. It's quite hard to relax sometimes when you're actually not at work. My parents split up. It, I just kind of just took it how it was, really. Um, it didn't it didn't phase me, I don't think. Two Christmases, <laughs> two birthdays. So it, it was just a bit like that, really. Sometimes I feel like I get more lucky if I wear my lucky trousers. Yeah, I was gaining like 10,000 subs a month in lockdown. I got picked on for being different, but when I played darts, I was allowed to be me. Like, oh, you're running around like a madman, and I'm like, yeah, never seen you so happy. I was like, what? <laughs> I did actually give him a little bit of advice. Can you remember what I said, Mason? I said, stop moving your body. <laughs> oh, I said, stop missing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to actually. I'll put it that way too. I'll end up pulling it off the wall. <laughs> I told you. So on today's On The Hockey episode, we're going to Charlie Murphy's house, the original winner of the Motor Super Series Influencer Showdown event. He's now alongside Angry Ginge as the solo winners and he's been kind enough to invite us down, well invite us up in fact, to his house in Ripon. He's one of the biggest content creators in the dark scene, he's got a lot of darts memorabilia, a lot of darts themselves, he gets sent a lot of stuff but he also goes out of his way and purchases a lot of stuff. He's just had a massive revamp of his setup so I'm really excited to see how that looks in person but I'm also really excited to hear a lot more about Charlie Murphy's story not only from a dieting sense, but in a general like sphere of life sense. He's gone through quite an inspiring weight loss journey, but he actually wasn't really a darts content creator until the last year or so, maybe. Um, he actually became big off football at Manchester United. Charlie Murphy's obviously the second influencer we've had on this series. The first one was the darts referee, and it was really interesting kind of to hear that story and how he went from being a professional BDC marketer to the world of social media. So I'm really interested to see how Charlie Murphy made that same journey. And we'll speak about how Charlie Murphy will obviously be coming back to the Super Series in December for the third iteration of the Influencer event, the Champions Edition, so to speak. And we have a couple of surprises up our sleeve for Charlie Murphy when we get to his house, but you'll see more about them later. I've also just missed a turn. <laughs> So I'm with Charlie Murphy, first ever Motor Super Series Influencer Showdown Champion. Yeah. Technically not called that at the time, but... No, no. It, it feels a long time ago now. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it it does kind of feels like last year with, with the other one that's just been. It feels like it was like last year's, but no, you've done well to squeeze two in really well. And one more, and just then yeah. the first. Yes. Speaking of, though, there is a little surprise. So we have Charlie. Oh, wow. A medal for you, Brilliant. a Super Series winner wow. medal. Thank you. An engraving on the back, ah. Charlie Murphy, the first winner of the Singles Influencer Event Showdown. Thank you very much. We thought we, we, thought we owed you, you yeah. something, because Angry Ginger got oh. to take the trophy home in the yeah. second one. No, that's brilliant. Thank so you. Far. I appreciate that. Yeah. As you can see, yeah. yeah I think, <laughs> oh, I don't know how good my, uh, my DIY is, but I'm not going to actually. I'll put it there later, because I'll end up pulling it off the wall, but yeah. So, we got... <laughs> That's how bad I am. I told you. Right. Let's talk about you growing up. Before yep. before social media was even a thing in your life, generally speaking, yep. what were you like as a child? What was um, school like? I did like school. I chopped and changed um, a few times. I didn't get kicked out or anything like that. I just moved around. My parents split up, so that I, I moved once with that. But I, I liked school. I was fairly at academic. I quite like sports. I never, I never played darts as a kid, ever. I weren't allowed a dartboard. Too scared you'd destroy the wall? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I really liked gaming. Like in, in secondary school, I liked, I had a PlayStation and Xbox. Um, I really, really enjoyed playing those. So I spent most of my time doing that. And then I left school and I moved again back, back here, where we are now, Ripon, North Yorkshire. And I got, a, I just got a job straight away, and I've always enjoyed working. What was it like? You mentioned there because it's something I personally didn't know that your parents split up. What was that like? Uh, for me, I, w I was like 11, 12, um, so I kind of just took it as it was. I I'd seen my friends; it happened to my friends quite a few times. It, I just kind of just took it how it was, really. Um, it didn't, it didn't phase me. I don't think. Two Christmases. 
<laughs> two birthdays. So it, it was just a bit like that, really. And then you mentioned going into work. Well, I actually did college um, where I trained to be an electrical engineer. I did level two and then I dropped out in level three because I had a motorbike accident um, and I damaged my knee. And I found it very difficult kneeling down. So, and I, I had a job like alongside, which where I worked in a uh, restaurant and I was, uh, I worked my way up there. And when I dropped out of college, I, I had a job, so it, was, I, it didn't seem a problem really. So I, I just stayed there, worked as a kitchen manager for a couple of years. And then I got bored of doing the same thing every day. So I decided, one of my friends worked for a removal company and they went abroad quite a lot. It was good. We got to see a lot of France, Spain, around the UK. But then when me and George had been together for a couple of years and wanted to get our own place, like being away wasn't really an option. She didn't really like enjoy being in the house flat by herself. So I thought, right, need to get a different job. I went to um, a cold storage warehouse where they store frozen food. It was at minus 19, but I, I did it for like three months, just past my probation. Um, and then a job came up in the office, but then my dad's disabled and he split up with his partner and it requires quite a lot of care. So he moved up here um, and he needed a carer and I uh, took over that role. So that's my full-time job now, but it's a paid role as well, which is because it's like he has a care package because it's not just me who does it. There's like when I'm not there now, there's another carer. And like when we're on holiday, there's, you know, backup staff agency, etc. What's that like for you, your current role? It, it's very tough. We're having a lot of problems at the minute. We're relating to things that are more mental issues and behaviour issues and, you know, because you're on a lot of tablets, etc. So it, it's very difficult. When, when you're a carer, you, you've got to understand that the person that you're caring for needs your help, but they're, they're not always going to... They're not always going to appreciate it. A lot of the time they can be in pain. The way I see it is like, if I ever have toothache or any kind of, like, severe pain, I can be a bit ratty, you know, a bit short-tempered. And some people live their life, like my dad lives his life in pain a lot of the time. So it's, it's just difficult, really. It's like any job. You can have your good days and you can have your bad days. You all seen the throwdown events? Yeah. Um, I was there last time. My dad had a, a fall whilst I was away. There's another worker there. I'm his main carer. Mm. So obviously he has one of these buzzers that you can press. That got pressed literally an hour after I'd been there and we're like three hours away. It's quite hard to relax sometimes when you're actually not at work. Whereas where I worked before, when you finish work, I didn't care about work at all. But sometimes as well, other days, like for argument's sake, when I'm in work tomorrow morning, um, after once I've made my dad breakfast, etc., I can go on my phone. If I wanted to reply to 100 comments, I could reply to 100 comments. How did the social media story kind of start for you because it definitely didn't start with that no it didn't it started i uh we became season ticket holders at manchester united me and my wife we went to a pub and we thought this pub was amazing there was it was full of fans chanting and i just literally got my phone out and i'd been watching tiktoks i thought i'll just post a video but i had like four followers so i thought my four followers might see it and seven hundred thousand people ended up seeing it hmm. and I thought, wow, next time I go to that pub, I'll do the same. And I, and I did the same, and it, it pretty much the same happened again. And I did a few dark lives. Finn Goldings, who actually used to watch them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he really liked them to be I had a scorer. And, and then, obviously, I posted the video before the Worlds last year with all my dark shirts on again. And it, that did quite well. And then the Worlds kind of got everyone back in the mood for that. I say the worlds, Luke Littler <laughs> and the worlds got everyone really back into darts. I want, I've always wanted to provide content that people like yeah. and content that people like is content that does well. Before that transition to darts, when did social media kind of become something where you thought, hang on a minute here, stuff started to potentially change for you, both in yeah. terms of having the followers, yeah. but also potentially change your day-to-day -day life. It's just been over a year since You've been able to, well, I've been able to on TikTok, you know, make proper wage from your videos, if that makes sense, because they brought in the, dear me, creativity beta program. Um, it's now the full program. Um, so that, that's made a difference. 
because you know you can do th i've upgraded my equipment things like that it's that's helping but i'll say a little bit before that like you say when you're going to it was when you were going to the football games people asking for pictures um you don't you don't do it your videos or anything in the public eye you do it all at home and it's just weird when you get recognized I can imagine it's quite surreal because obviously yeah. it's synonymous with celebrities getting stuck to photos and so on and so forth i don't think i'd like to get to a point like that um like you look at the for argument's sake the side men that have done absolutely brilliantly but they struggle with having a normal life don't they yeah it's a nice balance that people like you but then you can actually you can go to the shops and not not get hounded like you know proper celebrities do and then you mention the darts content kind of took off around the world and with Luke yeah. Littler. What made you kind of stay in that area? Because personally, I think your content is now 95% darts based. Yeah. Why did you choose to stay in the darts world and not in the football world, so to speak? My, co my football content now, I just post when I go to a game. The darts content you can make at home and I really enjoy it. I just, I've re just enjoy playing. It's my hobby now. Darts social media has given you a lot of opportunities yeah. and it was potentially really far behind other sporting industries from a media point of view. Yeah. What do you think of that? You, you must feel like you've played a part in getting it to where it is today. I'm normally, you know, a very humble person, but that was, a lot of people have mentioned to me, I mentioned, you know, like from playing TikTok live, doing videos, and it's not just me, there's other people. Darts for fun, who's just been on. There weren't many people like playing darts online on TikTok. And it, now it's absolutely flooded, which is great to see. I, I, I'm, I'm quite proud of it, really, because I get a lot, so many nice messages. And the way I see it is like, not everybody's got Sky TV or things like that to watch, you know, PDC darts or anything like that. So some people like just coming on and watching normal people play darts with the mates or by themselves or against a computer or even against them for free. What do you think of the growth in dart social media? Oh great. We get events now. Yeah. Obviously you played in a few of them, specifically at the Super Series events. Yeah. Was that something whatever even seen the possibility for no, you? Definitely not. I said to uh, my wife George the other day, I wouldn't even think I'd be playing darts again. Never mind playing every day, having the opportunities I've had, working with the big brands, Red Dragon, Winmore. It's all come about quite quick, but I think, like you've said, it's a kind of a bit of a catch up that was probably needed. But a lot of it as well, and I can't thank you enough, it's down to you guys for getting that invite to the first event. Well, it's down to you as well, mate. Don't sell yourself short. There's a reason you were invited. Yeah, I, pre yeah, I appreciate that, mate. It's, it's just sometimes you don't think, you probably didn't expect it good, don't I'd love to touch on that first influencer event and obviously you partaking in it, but then also winning it. What yeah. was that like when we contacted you to let you know that we'd love you to play in it if you were willing? I uh, was very surprised um, and kind of just wanted to bite your hand off and it'd be the next day really. Um, but yeah, I was really pleased and forever grateful. And I really enjoyed it. It was, I have, we've, I've said a few times, probably one of the, the best days of my life to be fair. That was actually a really historic week for the yeah. Super Series and yes. darts in general. Yeah. Bulgari's actually put in the highest recorded women's average. Yeah, she was brilliant, wasn't she? Yeah, and what was that like knowing that you were going to play the very next day on that stage? I, d I couldn't believe it really, I was very nervous. Um, and so we obviously watched her. Um, we actually left just before the final because I was really t we were really tired. Mm. Um, and we had to get back to the hotel and kind of get set for the next day. I think we were the first there, yeah. or second there to the event. I, th I think Darts Referee was there first actually with Ash, yeah. got there nice and early, got settled in, got to meet everyone, meeting people like Proddy and Lewis, even that in itself's big for me. And I was still waiting for Pie Face to turn up. And I was like, <laughs> I've watched Pie Face for years. Yeah. Getting to meet him, that was amazing. Anyway, Pie Face turned up, everyone was there then. And it was just time, I was so nervous. Don't think I'd be as nervous again. It's one of those events where like, to my knowledge, there's never really been anything like it. No. Um, so. It's not just a sense of, oh, you know, you're playing in front of a crowd, an actual crowd, and you're playing in front of an online crowd. But you've got nothing really to reference it off because the only no. other people you've seen play it are professional players. Yeah. And I actually did say on the way up that um, 
I remember you did an interview with me and Fallon Sherrick yeah. before yeah. the matches, yeah. and I thought, oh, he does seem really nervous. Yeah. Well, because you were one of the fancied favourites going into it, being one a darts greater, but someone who was actually like playing fairly regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Cause it must be weird knowing that like people almost expect you to win, despite you know you just being someone who does it for fun and not a professional. I, mean, I just wanted to play well, even even if I lost, I just wanted to play okay. Um, and I was happy how it did, even in the doubles, coming up short and I was happy how it went and Adam and George did fantastic. Yeah. Did the nerves ever drop off for you at any point? No, they didn't. Uh, it, t until that last start went in, they didn't. It, I felt like it, one of the games actually, one of the games I felt a little bit more comfortable against Finn because I felt he was more nervous than I was. But apart from that, it was all the way through. And then obviously you mentioned the nerves went after that last dart. Yeah. That last dart was the winning dart. <laughs> How did that feel? Oh, amazing. Um, couldn't believe it. And then it just seemed to go really quick after that. It seemed <laughs> like I'd won and then I was getting pictures with everybody, thanking everybody, saying bye. And then, then we were in a Chinese <laughs> in Portsmouth, just having tea and it, jobs are good. And Obviously your family were there. Yeah. What was that like? Because you were probably one of the only people who actually were able to bring someone. Uh, amazing. Um, we, we do everything, really. Me and my wife together, like, like events like that, and my brother. My brother actually drove down on the morning. And it, it did help. It did help. Except from when my wife, after maybe two good darts, you could hear her like, getting a bit excited. <laughs> I've had to tell her about that. <laughs> we kind of teased that, you know, like... George Scaife wasn't invited, you weren't invited, Adam Lipscomb weren't invited, but there was obviously a reason for that. Yeah. Uh, we didn't want to give away too quickly that there was a third event coming, but you kind of watched that event knowing that whoever went on to win the event <laughs> would be yeah. someone but you'd definitely be seeing come the third event. Yeah. That winner, obviously, Angry Ginge, yeah. someone who you've actually played from me. Enough. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we had the week, the week two before he got his skull here and uh, we've had some brilliant games, to be fair. How excited are you for that third event? Uh, m massively excited, mate. Hotel's booked. I'm ready for action. Really looking forward to it. I think you're going into that event as well. Knowing a lot more about not only how you prepare on the day and how you treat it, yeah. but knowing a lot more about the competition in that event. Yes. Because there is six people who've already played there. I'll run through them just quickly. Obviously, yeah. yourself and Josh Scaife. Yeah. Obviously, pie face from the first yes. event. Yeah. Three players from the first event. Yeah. Then we've got Angry Ginge, yeah. who obviously won the singles event. Darts for Fun, who obviously yeah. won the pairs event. And then Sean Nyland, who was part of the final. Yeah, played him as well. Yes, you actually recommended him for that event. Yes, yeah. He, uh, he did really well, got the 180. Very steady player. Yes. And then we have two more players. Yeah. This is obviously a champion's event, so to speak. That's why we've got six previous players returning who all did yeah. very well in their respective events. But yeah. we already confirmed that Danny Ahrens yes. will be a part of this Champions event. Yeah. And we've got a bit of an exclusive here for you, Charlie. Ooh. You're the first person outside of the Super Series circle who will find out who that challenger is. Ooh. Any guesses before I reveal it to you? Jack made, potentially. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, you're spot on. <laughs> it is, it, it yeah. is Jack, mate. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. My brother will be chuffed with that because uh, he listens to Happy Hour every episode. So he'll be happy with that. It's actually kind of a little bit of a romantic tale, so to speak, having Pie Face and Jack, yeah. mate. Yeah, probably the, the first two to do anything on the, on the TV audience. Yeah, because the PDC obviously kind of tapped into the social media sphere from time to time by having people like Jack Mate and Pie Face yeah. play. I believe in their head-to-head, -head, it's actually one all at the moment. Right. So if they were to play on the Super Series stage, it would actually be a decider. Right. But you've actually got all eight influencers there. You know them all. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Do you fancy your chances going into that event? Because you are one of the four people who are going in as a champion. It's one of those where it's, because it's a short format, and if you don't play your best darts and the other person does, Ginge darts for fun, even Pie Face, they, they can take you out quickly. Like I was 1-0 down to Pie Face in the final. Yeah. Um, 
literally, if he gets a double, it's finished. That being said, something what I'm actually really, really interested about is Matthew Edgar uttered a line on commentary. And it was, the man who says, easy now. Yeah. I'm really, really curious. Where did that come from? Um, I was streaming foot champs. And if anyone ever used to watch the uh, foot champ streams, it was far from easy now. Um, <laughs> I was pretty bad, but I enjoyed it until started losing. And uh, it's just a wild celebration. Um, after, I think, a penalty shootout or a few goals, mm. it just slipped out. And then the comments started spamming it. Um, and then it became a bit of a, because I did the foot champ streams like a couple of weeks um, and people started saying it, so I started saying it and then I never stopped. It's become your brand now, really. Hasn't it? Yeah. It's stuff yeah. you get printed on flights, yeah. for example. Yeah. It was something what you uttered a lot during the event and, yeah. you know, we've used in promo pieces countless times. I, w I messaged Callum Rids the other day because uh, yeah. it, it had a good game after a bit of media stick the previous few days or week even he messaged me I can't remember what he said but he says uh, like you say easy now <laughs> pro players even though I'm like bloody <laughs> hell what's it like knowing that you have a lot of professional dart players people who you grew up watching know who you are ridiculous just crazy really I'm at another exhibition or two potentially in December and just to be able to get to hang out with the pros, talk to the pros, it's brilliant. You mentioned off camera, Adrian Lewis was someone who you met recently. What was that like? That is up there with one of the best nights of my life. I've never, I've never been so happy for so many hours just in someone's company, really. It had me, my wife, my brother, and everyone else who was in there in the players' room just absolutely howling all night and he, he taught me this trick <laughs> underarm darts <laughs> he did it so casually as well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well it, he was going for bullseye and tops with it you uh, unbelievable no, no really really nice guy i actually think a lot of this stuff has kind of come off the back of obviously how big you've got on social media and stuff like that but i actually noticed you've become a lot better at darts when you came to the super oh. series for the first time you were steady you know what i mean yeah. but now i saw one thing what I was really like, fair enough, is I saw you were playing in an event relatively local to you and you qualified as the last seed, I think, yes. and then went on to win the event. Where's, yeah. where's this kind of improvement come from? Playing all the time. Play, playing a few times a week. Like, now we talk, like, where are we talking here? I'm just throwing really steady. If I concentrate now, because obviously I, I can't talk and throw. Yeah. Um, and I think, I've really upped it i'm really happy I'm, I'm i'm disappointed now if i average low 60s mm. whereas before i was aiming for 60. like now i'm wanting to get into the stage where i can say i'm a 70 average player not there yet i can average 70. i've averaged I, I average over that sometimes but i want that to be my base level when, and when it comes to important matches and things like that it's keeping you your nerve and your bottle, and a lot of that's come from being on the motors. We spoke a lot about kind of the positives of social media and yeah. a lot of the things you benefited from it, but yeah. what's been the negative side of it like? Because everyone experiences it, but has there any, ever been a moment where you're like, maybe this isn't for me, maybe it's all a bit too much? I've not met a creator yet or somebody who posts online that doesn't receive any form of negativity. And, and people, people will be negative about anything. Um, there was, there was a point before, before the dark stuff started that I stopped posting, but that was more because I was really unhappy with my weight at the time. And I wasn't getting comments about it, but I, I'd expressed that I was trying to have a weight loss journey. Mm. And at that time, I was put, like, putting weight on. And I just thought, right, I need, to, I need to focus on something else here. And that's why I kind of went, I came off social media, cleared my head for a good bit, and then went on to sort it out. But... It's never nice reading negative comments. You actually mentioned there the weight loss journey. That was something I'd love to talk to you about. Yeah. It's really inspiring. Like you say, you lost, what was it, five stone? Yeah, just just over to be fair. I would like to, I have said I would like to get to that, ooh, about 100 kilo for the next event in December, which I'm about eight kilos off. I'm, I'm really enjoying it at the gym on a morning uh, and I'm enjoying eating better and I've noticed because this last month kind of since the event I've said 
I, I'm really trying now. I'd like, I'd like people to see a bit of a difference from when I was up there last time. Um, and I've noticed with a little bit of weight training, um, eating clean and things like that, my darts have actually been getting better. Yeah. I think clear mind as well, that helps because you always feel better when you trip. Well, I feel better when I'm training mentally. Was there a moment what made you realise that, okay. You needed to lose weight? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I was on holiday. I bought all new clothes, 2XL, because um, all my normal clothes were like XL and because I'd shot up. And they're all, they all got too tight pretty much by the time the holiday came around. Slash, when I was on holiday and I was struggling to sleep, um, heavy, like heavy breathing, chest felt tight, um, just just felt so sluggish and horrible and it just everything just did not it felt so much worse than it had ever been before heartburn things like that and i thought now nah, i've lost weight before i always feel like it's going to be you're losing weight and training or or maintaining or i'm just going to keep putting weight on i never really had a great relationship with food i don't like healthy things but i found a good balance now i've worked it in where i, ca I can have the nice things just I have it in a lot better moderation to what I used to. I was 141 point summit kilos, which was, I think about 22 stone, four pounds. Um, and now we're like 16 stone, 10. Well, how proud are you so far of this journey? It, really proud, mate, to be honest. I, I'm still overweight in theory. And I, I, realistically, to get to where I really want to be, I'd lose two stone. But if I was to stay at this weight, I'd, I'd just be happy because it's so much better than I was before. And I can do so much. I'm not limited now. So, but I am going to push on um, and get to where I want to get to. But it's not as time sensitive as it was. Like, at the time I felt it was now or never. How important is it to have a good support network around you for something like that? Obviously, on the wall here, you've got your wife. What's it yeah. like having her involved? Not just in a weight loss journey, but in everything in general. Brilliant, mate. When it comes to anything, we do everything together. She doesn't play darts, so darts is just me. But if we go to events, she supports me. If she has things on, I support her. She's doing really well with the running. I tried to keep up with her, but I, I just can't get the. I just can't do the running. Before we finish, yeah. I'd love to kind of go through this room. Yes. Like you said, you've kind of mentioned in this so far. You've kind of you, know, you had a lot of dart shirts yes. and a lot of darts. Yes. But you put a lot of time and effort into making this lovely setup. What you thank you, yeah. Kindly enough invited us to today. But yeah. walk me through it, Charlie. Okay. Um, so we've obviously we've got the board, and yeah. this this is a self scorer, which I think has helped my game massively. And there's loads of different brands that do these now. Um, I've got my PC, which I need to run my streams through. Um, it's about an inch thick in dust because we are <laughs> we are in a garage. Um, we've we've put these up these were plaster boards which you know we've not quite got them perfect but we're really happy with how we have got it we put carpet down these these are probably the most expensive part the the backdrop the panels um we decided not to do anything with this brick wall because we were putting these shelves up and i've got these up because they're for all my darts i've got my target darts my winmore darts my red dragon darts and then a mixture of like shot mission things like that down there obviously my cameras can go on there I did have, I just kind of used this to stack whatever on. Um, I look at all my Swiss points. I've got hundreds of them uh, and all my normal points as well. But it's more bits and bobs. We've got some new darts there, some Kronos, Raymond Van Barneveld darts. And then I built this the other day. This is why I've got a bad eye because I was painting this. Uh, I've got an eye infection, by the way. <laughs> It's not good. I was painting this uh, just because I had these screwed into the brick and I didn't like the backdrop and I thought, you know what, just because I, I can just do a quick video, it can help for the videos and content. Not only that, it, it tidies it up a bit because we haven't got the most amount of space. And this was from my Winmore clay zone. This is my hockey. Um, I, you can unscrew those bolts from your clay zone if you didn't want them out, but I maybe we needed it because the carpet, it's a brand new carpet so, and you're getting a bit squashed there, so that's maybe why the clay zone's good, but if we have to replace carpet, it's not end up world. Uh, it's not a big room, is it? But no, it's just a nice place to play with my friends, mm. with my family, and I can shout in here as well. Um, so the, and the missus can sleep. <laughs> to wrap it up, yeah. Where do you see yourself 
in a uh, a journey from last year. Yeah, well, if you'd asked me if you'd asked me that one year ago, I would definitely not have said in here now with you mm. playing darts. So I don't know. I said I mentioned off camera. I'd love to get to a stage where I can say I'm a seventy average player. That that's quite a big ask. That's the thing, I think for me, seventy average is a decent level of darts to be honest. So if I got to that, I'd be really happy. Um, I enjoy playing darts even if I average forty five. I enjoyed it for months in my bedroom. I like creating content for people. I just want people to enjoy it. I want people to, if they want to play darts, they'll play darts. The amount of messages I get is, I've just got back into darts because of you. I've just got into darts for the first time because of you. It's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Mm. More players, more more players, more tournaments, more sponsorships for professionals. So I heard someone say the other day, it's about only the top 64 players in darts almost can afford to do darts. Mm. Whatever you know, it'd be great to see that bigger, mm. and I think a high tide lifts all ships. Exactly. Yeah. And if there's one piece of advice you can give people are watching at home, mm. what would that be? Enjoy it. Just enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, don't bother. Choose something else. Um, you've got to enjoy it, um, and don't worry if you lose, because someone's got to lose, aren't they? If you don't lose, the other person is. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. I've really enjoyed it. Thank Thanks you, mate. Cheers. Me. Thank you. Thank you.